in the last video in our series on differential equations, um, we introduced the concept of um, convolution. And we noted if we have two functions, say both, both are functions of t, the convolution of the two functions is this integral, where now instead of t is the variable, x is the variable. So this is, instead of writing it f of t inside the integral, it's f of x. Then for the function that's on the right-hand side of the star, it's g of t minus x, dx. So inside the integral, t is being treated like a constant. x is now the variable that we integrate with. And again, in the last um, video, we did a specific example of this. And in fact, in the last video, we demonstrated that this is also equal to g of t star f of t, even though they have different integrals. This is the convolution of f of t and g of t, just blindly following our um, formula. Now for g of t convoluted with f of t, inside the integral we write it as g of x. Now f of t is on the right hand side of the star. Inside the integral we write it as f of t minus x, integrate with respect to x. So we have two different integral expressions here and here depending upon the order in which we do or the order in which we write out the convolution of the two functions but as we demonstrated in the previous video these two integral expressions are in fact equal to each other. Now the value of convolution um, in studying differential equations is due to this equation, which we haven't proved. We will do that in a future video. Notice for this integral, this does give us some function of t. We're integrating with respect to x. Then we put the limits in for x going from 0 to t. So this integral does give us some function of t. And again, we demonstrated this with a specific example in our um, introductory videos. So if we take the Laplace transform of the convolution of f of t with g of t, this gives us some function h of t. If we take the Laplace transform of that, well, if f of t has a corresponding Laplace transform of f of s, g of t has g of s for its Laplace transform, then the Laplace transform of the convolution of these, h of t, that is equal to f of s times g of s. What we'll do in this video is just give several examples of this relationship. In a future video, we will actually prove this equation. Now, in the earlier videos in our series, we derived the fundamental um, Laplace transform equations with the sine of kt, the hyperbolic cosine, or the hyperbolic sine, the cosine of kt, the hyperbolic cosine of kt, t to the n, and e to the minus kt. So we're assuming everyone is familiar now with these formulas. So let's suppose that we have this integral. Say we have oh, say t minus x times the sine of 2x dx. x goes from 0 to t. 
and we want to find the Laplace transform of that integral expression. This is set up actually so that we can write it as a convolution. Now notice though how our formula is. The function that's to the right of the star inside the integral that's written as t minus x. So let's just rewrite the integral and we'll have this appearing on the right hand side. Just to make certain we don't get confused. So we have the integral of the sine of 2x times t minus x dx. Now this is equal to the convolution of now we write them as functions of t. The sine of 2x, that is the sine of 2t. Here inside the integral, this is g of t minus x, but over here is just g of t. Well this that is our g of t minus x. So over here it's just t. So this integral expression is the convolution of the sine of 2t with t. Now let's just go backwards. If we have this and we want to write it as an integral expression, we just follow our formula this is f of t. Inside of the integral we write it as a function of x. There it is. This is our g of t. Inside the integral it's g of t minus x. So that's just t minus x dx. Now, and of course we could also write it if we wanted to. We demonstrated that in the previous video. You can reverse the order of them even though they have different integral expressions. They do come out to be the same. But now the Laplace transform of this is the Laplace transform of this. So the Laplace transform of the sine of 2t that is equal to what? The Laplace transform of this function times the Laplace transform of this function. And the Laplace transform of the sine of 2t from our earlier formulas, we know that is 2 divided by s squared plus 4. And the Laplace transform of t that is just 1 over s. So going back to here, the Laplace transform of this integral is the same thing as this convolution function in either order actually, which equals 2 over s times s squared plus 4. So there's the first example. Let's just take a couple of more here just to get used to working with this. Suppose we have the integral of e to the minus t minus x times say the cosine of x dx x goes from 0 to t and again let's put this 
on the right hand side over here the way we have it written in the formula up here just to be consistent so we have the cosine of x times e to the minus t minus x dx. And the way we have the integral written, this follows this formula here. So to write it as a convolution, f of x is written as f of t. There's our f of x. So that is the cosine of t on the right hand side of the star. It's not g of t minus x, it's just g of t. Here we have e to the minus t minus x. So over here it is just e to the minus t. So now the Laplace transform of this that's the same thing as a Laplace transform of our convolution. And the cosine of t, its Laplace transform is s divided by s squared plus 1 and for e to the minus t that is 1 over s plus 1. And again we're just following the formula that the Laplace transform of this convolution is equal to the Laplace transform of this function times the Laplace transform of that function. So s divided by s squared plus 1 times s plus 1, that would be the Laplace transform of this integral expression. Let's just quickly do one more problem. Suppose we have the integral, say, of e to the x times t minus x squared dx. x goes from 0 to t. And we're saying find a Laplace transform of this integral expression. Of course, the way we have it written out, this follows our formula. So to write it as a convolution expression, f of x is e of x, so over on this side it's going to be f of t, or that's going to be e t. Write out the star. And g of t minus x, that's t minus x squared. But now on the other side of the equation, we write it just as a function of t. So that's just going to be t squared. And again, we're just simply, blindly actually, just following our formula. The Laplace transform of this, that would be the Laplace transform of our convolution. And that is equal to the Laplace transform of this times the Laplace transform of this. The Laplace transform of e to the t, that's 1 over s minus 1. The Laplace transform of t squared, that is 2 over s cubed. 
So 2 divided by s cubed times s minus 1, that's the Laplace transform of that integral expression. So um, this is just getting us used now to um, thinking in terms of the Laplace transform of a convolution is just the Laplace trans or is just the product of the individual Laplace transforms of these functions that we are convoluting. However, um, the real use of the convolution function in um, studying differential equations is actually the reverse of this. In other words, take the inverse Laplace transform of both sides of this, and we have the inverse Laplace transform of f of s g of s where this corresponds to a function f of t this corresponds to a function g of t the inverse the plus transform of multiplying these together it is not f of t times g of t it is instead the convolution of f of t times g of t and this is just that integral expression there so what we'll do in the next video is we'll consider problems like this where we have two Laplace transforms multiplied together and we want to find out what would be the corresponding function that corresponds the corresponding function expresses a variable of t that would correspond to the product of these Laplace transforms. So we'll consider the opposite problem of what we considered in this video, but really it's this expression that has the most practical applications here in solving differential equations problems. So we'll have several examples of this relationship. And then after we work through several examples, we get used to handling this, then in a future video we will actually prove this equation. Okay, and a reminder that uh, the playlist for all the videos is at the website digital-university.org.